Hello, hello. Let me see. Where to start? Ah, oh, yes. Queen Victoria. Now, who was it? Back in 1851, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert set up the Crystal Palace Acquisition. This was in London. So it was rumored at the time that Victoria and Albert would express a really deep connection with each other, would wear matching pink undergarments. It was really quite common for men to wear pink undergarments at that time. But it was a very revolutionary move for women to. Uh, further confirmation of that rumor was an exhibit at the Crystal Palace, which was called Victoria's Secret, where for the very first time, a modern brassiere was put on display. And of course, it was pink. Now, after the Crystal Palace exposition was over, that line of clothing from Victoria's Secret was sold. Specifically, men and women's undergarments were sold in color pink. Years later, that company, which was selling the line, branded a specific line underneath it, which they called pink on the nose, right? So uh, I'm assuming you spoke to Frank? Hmm. Actually, don't tell me. I'd rather focus on the matter at hand. So, in the show, I curated Across the Ages and Berry Tones, pink from 1403 to 1593. Uh, in 2015, I showed pieces of art and pieces of fashion that exemplified the usage of pink in Renaissance society. What was common amongst women of status was wearing pink as a sign of their fertility. And men would reciprocate that by wearing pink lipstick and kissing their suitor's hand to try and stake their claims on them. Here we see Eleanor of Habsburg, Eleonore von Habsburg, um, the second wife of François Premier in the 1530s. She was actually drawn twice in the same dress. And though this one looks green to the modern eye, it is pink, as evidenced in this second image from the same day. It was described as berry tone sight, for the vibrancy matches no other in the Queen's chambers. And I actually got the title for my show from that quote. Queen Eleanor almost exclusively wore pink dresses and pink gowns in her court, and she often made her ladies-in-waiting match. So this led to a massive surge in the popularity of pink among nobility in France in the mid-16th century. And not a lot of people know this, but when she died in 1558, she actually had her coffin lined with pink silks. Thank you. The first pink pigment was introduced in 1776 by Jean-Honoré Flagonard. He wanted to invent a new color to paint with, and he used it in many of his works. He made it hip to wear pink, and all the elite men and women were sporting pastel gowns and petticoats. <sighs> but what about Flagonard's dismay? It was painted in 1757, and the pictures of women were made from dress. No, that's yellow! Anyway. Oh, and he also started a perfume company. In 1813, a modiste was trying to create a fabric glue to help her repair dresses easier and faster. This was known as superb glue. However, due to the chemical reactions occurring within the glue, it turned pink. Once it went on the market as superb glue, it blew up. Everyone wanted to repair things during the Regency. This led to other office supplies being created in this color. We had this pink scissors, pink stapler, and pink folder. All huge hits in the 1810s. I have actually been working on recreating this formula using less toxic chemicals. Oh no! Pink is deeply rooted in the history of business. It is an integral factor in accounting 
and filing. In 1876, Mabel Dewey and his sister invented the pink Dewey system. It organized files by shades of pink. This became too confusing and later they decided to invent the pink Dewey Decimal System. In the system, the files were sorted by pink numbers. The system later led to the invention of the pink filing cabinet in the 1890s. Now everything is moving online and hopefully into pink digital folders. I just love colors, especially pink. Pink should make everything better, you know? For instance, imagine a dude named Floyd. Lame, right? Now imagine Pink Floyd. Way cooler. And Lemonade, it's good as it is, but Pink Lemonade is just so much better. And Rosé, white wine is lame compared to pink wine. Now let's go through a rundown of the history of the color pink. Bright pink is the oldest known biologically generated color. The name pink first appeared in the late 17th century. Madame Pompadour, the maitre la titre of Louis XV, was a top fashion influencer of her time, and she loved pink. In the early 18th century West, red was considered aggressive, and pink was a secondary shade of red, thus having military connotations. In the late 18th century, businessmen would decorate their offices with pink due to its perceived calming factors. Mamie Eisenhower loved pink as well as being a housewife and decorated the White House with pink all over, thus garnering the attention that led to a feminine appreciation for pink. Since pink was so popular in the 1950s, marketing companies began to sell everything pink, including household products, tying domesticity and pink, leading to today's feminine connotations. I did all this research myself. I'm so proud of my passion for the color pink. <laughs> 